For years, researchers have studied the Shroud of Turin image, the weave of its fabric and the chemistry of its stains. But what if the real secret wasn't on the surface? What if it was hidden deep within the cloth itself? With the help of modern DNA technology, scientists shifted their focus away from what the eye could see and began looking for what the eye could never notice. Microscopic fragments trapped in the linen's fibers. And when these fragments were carefully extracted and sequenced, the results painted a picture far more complex and far more surprising than anyone had expected. In fact, what the scientists uncovered might change the direction of this centuries-old debate. Let's start with what we know. The Shroud of Turin is stored today in a cathedral in northern Italy. It's long, it's narrow, and on its surface, almost ghost-like, you can see a man. His arms are crossed, his body shows wounds, wrists and feet pierced, blood stains on the head and a mark on the side. It looks eerily like the biblical description of the crucifixion. When it was first shown publicly in the Middle Ages, pilgrims rushed to see it. For them, this was no simple relic. It was proof, but modern science hasn't made things simple. In 1988, carbon dating tests dated the fabric to around the 13th or 14th century. Other scientists quickly pointed out that the sample might have been taken from a repaired patch, not the original cloth. Suddenly, the certainty of that test fell apart, and once again, the shroud became a mystery that refused to be neatly solved. This is where ancient DNA enters the story, and here's where things get insane. Every living thing sheds DNA. If you're near a cloth, you leave behind traces, sometimes microscopic, sometimes buried in the weave itself. Plants leave pollen, Travelers leave skin cells. Over time, these traces build up. In the last decade, sequencing technology has advanced to the point where scientists can pull this invisible history out of ancient artifacts. And when researchers turned this technique on the Shroud of Turin, they weren't looking to prove or disprove miracles. They simply wanted to know what biological signatures are hiding in those threads. The results shocked almost everyone who examined them. The shroud didn't just contain DNA from Europe, where it has been preserved for centuries. It revealed a far more complex story. Traces of plant DNA were identified in the Middle East, including species native to modern-day Israel, Palestine, and Lebanon, the very heart of the biblical world. Other genetic fragments pointed to plants common across the Mediterranean, consistent with the shroud's long history in Italy and France. But the most surprising discovery came from South Asia. DNA linked to plants that grow in India, a region far beyond the traditional paths of Christian relics. How could that be? The most reasonable explanation is trade. In ancient times, fabrics, spices, and sacred objects traveled vast distances along interconnected trade routes, and the shroud may well have carried with it the biological fingerprints of that global journey. During the first centuries of the Common Era, the Silk Route linked the Mediterranean world to Asia. Goods, fabrics, spices, and ideas traveled thousands of miles. It's entirely possible that the linen used for the shroud was grown in one region, traded through another, and eventually ended up in the hands of people in the Levant. So the shroud isn't just a local relic. Its DNA evidence shows it's part of a much wider story, a fabric that journeyed through civilizations, absorbing the fingerprints of every everyone who touched it. But the scientists didn't stop at plants, they also found human DNA. And here's where things get really shocking. But before I reveal what they found, make sure you take a second to grab a Shroud of Turin shirt from godcollection.com. Thousands of other people around the world are already wearing it, and it's now your turn. Now let's get back to the video. The DNA wasn't just from one lineage. They discovered genetic signatures linked to people of Middle Eastern, North African, and European ancestry. In other words, the shroud has been handled by many different people across cultures and centuries. But tucked among those traces were DNA haplogroups, strongly associated with ancient populations of the Levant. This doesn't prove the shroud wrapped Jesus, but it places the cloth's origins in a region that matches the earliest Christian traditions. Historically, the trail of the shroud is messy. The first solid reference is in 14th century France, when it was displayed by a French knight. But before that, that's where legend takes over. Some records suggest a cloth 
like it was kept in Constantinople in the Byzantine era. Others link it to Edessa in modern-day Turkey, where an image of Christ not made by human hands was venerated for centuries. If true, the shroud may have been carried from the Middle East to Byzantium and finally to Europe. The DNA evidence linking it to both the Levant and the Mediterranean fits perfectly with that kind of journey. And then there's the image itself. Scientists have tried everything to explain it. Painting, scorching, chemical reactions, but none of the experiments have reproduced the shroud's strange properties. The image rests only on the outermost fibers. It has depth information, almost like a primitive 3D effect. No medieval artist, no matter how skilled, could have faked that. Some researchers suggest radiation or an unknown chemical reaction during burial. Others argue for natural processes we still don't fully understand. Whatever the case, the image refuses to yield its secret. So where does this leave us? Science hasn't proven the shroud is the burial cloth of Jesus, but the DNA evidence shows it's not a simple medieval forgery either. Its fibers carry the story of trade routes, of ancient populations, of pilgrims from across continents. For believers, this deepens the mystery in their favor. For skeptics, it leaves just enough room for doubt. And maybe that's exactly why the shroud continues to fascinate. Because it sits right on the line between faith and science. Whether you believe it or not, the Shroud of Turin is more than just an artifact. It's a mirror of human history. Within its threads, we see ancient trade, pilgrimage, devotion, and centuries of longing for proof of the divine. It forces us to ask not only whether miracles can happen, but how far science can go in explaining them. So what has ancient DNA revealed? The Shroud is not an isolated relic locked in medieval Europe. It's global. It's Middle Eastern, it's European, it even carries whispers of Asia. It's been touched by countless lives, carried across centuries and preserved as one of the greatest mysteries we still can't solve. Whether it once wrapped the body of Jesus Christ, we may never know for certain. But one thing is clear, the Shroud of Turin has become more than an object. It's a conversation between science and faith, the past and the present, and perhaps between humanity and the divine. In the end, the Shroud of Turin remains what it has always been, a mystery. But now a mystery with even deeper roots. Ancient DNA has revealed that this cloth isn't just European or Middle Eastern, it carries traces of a journey that stretched across continents absorbing the fingerprints of pilgrims, traders, and entire civilizations along the way. Whether it truly wrapped the body of Jesus Christ may never be proven, but what we can say with certainty is that it's far more than a medieval forgery. It's a relic that connects cultures, faiths, and centuries, reminding us that history is never as simple as it seems. And perhaps that's why the Shroud still captivates the world. Not because it gives us clear answers, but because it leaves us standing at the edge of the unknown, wondering what other secrets are still woven into its ancient threads. So what do you think? Is the Shroud of Turin the true burial cloth of Jesus Christ? Or just an extraordinary relic shaped by history and belief?